Dredge, you wouldn't think a fishing game could be strange and mysterious, right? Well, think again, because this game takes our fisherman character and puts him into horrifying nightmare scenarios. Ever been chased down by a fish six times the size of your boat? No? Well, you're in luck. So let's do it and get every single achievement in the game. Starting here, me, a scruffy fisherman, being shipwrecked on an island near a lighthouse. Okay, so we're in, we're in some sort of town. And coming into contact with a very fat and likely very wealthy mare. After a little bit of waffling, we're able to jump right into fishing for my first catch. But not before the mare gives me some more handy advice that we need to be back before the fog rolls in. Okay, wonder what that's about. Probably not important. Let's catch me some fish. So how do you actually fish in this game? Basically, you need to pull up the catch by pressing F, then figure out how to fit as much as you can in this little grid inventory slot. For example, there's a fish right there, wood, which is a line of three, and then a little mechanical parts that could take up one or two slots, but can only be in a particular location. Five fish from one spot, that's pretty good. But before you can upgrade anything, you need to focus on upgrading your hull for more pure inventory slots, because when you upgrade things like your engine and your lights, it takes up more inventory space, which means you have less room for fish. And then, out of nowhere, well, foghorn. That's fun. <laughs> what? Okay, well, achievement one, hear a foghorn echo. <laughs> Don't know why, but this is just kinda scary. <laughs> with the night rolling in soon and the weird fog coming with it, we headed back to town at around 6 p.m. to find the mayor once more. Oh wow, he's waiting for me. So as it turns out, I'm indebted to this mayor in addition to the town for our new boat he helped me repair. So I gotta sell my fish to the fishmonger and also let the mayor take some of the profits. God damn it. He will surely do that and not embezzle all of it. He seems like a pretty trustworthy looking guy. I then met a very important gal, the shipwright, who can repair my ship if it ever gets damaged, which, trust me in this video, it will. And then unlocked researching, which lets me upgrade certain pieces of my equipment. Like I mentioned earlier, it lets me get more space for fish, more pieces for ship equipment, etc, etc. And with that, it was achievement number two done. Introductions done, it was now time to become the best fisherman the land had ever seen. I paid off my $26 loan right away so I didn't have to worry about it, then I was back on the water to get some more fishes. New fish, a gulf flounder. Oh, looks like I do not have any room. Wow, I already have to go back. <laughs> Those big fish really take up a lot of space. Hopefully they sell for more. Oh. Huh, this lighthouse is kind of scaring me. I soon figured out a new mechanic in this game is that the rocks don't in fact show up until I get close and shine my light on it. And as the fog and darkness close in, I had to be very careful that I wouldn't shipwreck again. Because if we hit any of the rocks, it could disable a tile in our hull, which could mean we could lose a fish or straight up just like disable my engine. So if we hit too many stuff and a lot of my stuff gets disabled, we're sleeping with the fishies, especially if the engine goes out. Don't really want to learn what happens if we lose that. But that's not the only mysterious circumstance. I came across a set of ancient stone sculptures that, when interacted with, gave me a vision of my entire town burning. Kind of a scary vision. I think I'm just gonna go home now. Thank you very much. And on top of that, some creepy old lighthouse worker lady ambushed me, warning me to move away. Oh god, what does she want? Uh. I'm a simple man. Uh. How's our problem? All of this meant that something bad was coming in the near future, 100%, literally not a doubt in my mind. After selling some items and buying a couple of upgrades, I was released back to the open oceans, if you could call sailing between these two tiny little islands the open ocean, and taking a quick pit stop to deliver some packages for the mayor. This nice looking dock worker was the recipient. After my delivery, Rod's, what? That's kinda a not normal looking squid, I think, maybe? I sold my shifty looking squid I'd caught to the fishmonger and got a new quest from a guy who would somehow put my face to the cabin window from inside. He told me that the fish was corrupted and he wanted to examine the artifact that had been contained within it. Meeting him on Blackstone Isle was the only way to see what was up, so with little suspicion, that's what I went and did. Getting another corrupted fish along the way, I got to Blackstone Isle where the man introduced himself as a rare collector of sorts, and he told me this. He could upgrade my ship with dredging equipment, which would gave me a huge upper hand as a fisherman, but in return I had to help him collect five rare relics, a key, a ring, 
A necklace, a watch, and a music box. No problem, man. I'm on the case. Come on. Of course I accepted. Who wouldn't? We had now unlocked the name of the game. Dredging. No freaking way. With the dredge crane firmly fitted to the ship, which, by the way, unlike other upgrades, does not take up any space on the hull, we can now play a small mini game to salvage up treasures. This is how we're going to find the five ancient items that the collector guy needs. What was going on? in this little fishing town. Creepy old women, corrupted fishes, ancient artifacts. One thing was for sure, there was a lot more than met the eye. Speaking of eyes, it's probably a good time to mention the massive glaring one at the top of my screen. Basically, it's like our crazy meter. It shows our sanity levels. So if we start staying out too late or go near demon spirit shipwrecks, it starts going crazy and lets us know to get the freak out of there. Anywho. Moving on. Coming back ashore in the town, I met two new people in my adventure. The builder, who needed us to get some materials for her to relocate, and the lighthouse keeper. She tells us that once again, there's a pool of water that has something moving around in the deep dark, and once again, told us to stay away from it. Kind of becoming a theme for her. I think I see exactly what she's talking about. So uh, instead of staying away and, you know, valuing my life, I headed straight towards that area. Uh, 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 that's a very bad, what? I think I found the shipwreck and maybe a ship ghost. In that spot was where I could do my first dredging, which I used to nab the first of the five relics, the key. Dredging is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll explain it anyways. We have two rotating circles, and I have to press F to swap between two and avoid the gaps. Simple enough, although my first attempt, I admit, was not amazing. In my defense, I, I thought it was the opposite of that. I had to aim for the gaps. Not sure why, though. One down, four to go. All right, well, this house is right over there. I guess let's check it out. Oh, achievement. Happy with our progress, the collector opened a book, which filled me with like some crazy weird light. What? What is this guy doing to me? Otherworldly speed at a price? Giving me the haste ability. What did you do to me? Yeah, what the heck did you do to me? Okay, you just made me go very fast. Cool. Games that give you movement speed abilities, like right at the start of the game, instant S tier for me. That's all I can say. So, he's able to use magic. Okay, good to know, good to know. And he also helpfully marked the next location where I need to dredge for an artifact on my map, so I just went off. Pearl earrings. Hmm, cute little baby dog. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh, this is where the builder wants her stuff. Okay. But out of nowhere, a giant angler looking fish with a light on its head freaking wrecked me. What is your freaking problem, man? Damaging my hull and throwing a bunch of wood I collected overboard. Okay. Okay. Uh, nice. I think I'm gonna go home. Oh, great. I'm sure that's just what I wanted. Okay, I think I'm getting why they say don't stay out late. Okay, quick little sidetrack. What the hell is this? Something slithers... August 20th, 1927. <laughs> okay. Turns out this tiny sidetrack I'd taken while heading back had totally screwed me because my ship sunk and I had to restart. On the next try, I hit the rocks, disabling my engine, chugging back home at a literal snail's pace. It wasn't a massive setback, I just fixed the boat and got back on track, but you know, I guess that's what happens when you lose your engine. Honestly, I should be grateful that I can move it on. I don't really see a sail on this thing. I'd now unlocked way more places I could head to as well. Where should we go? I think maybe Gale Docks. It's quite a journey, but I'm interested. Landing on the next island, there is a shipwreck with items for me to pillage. Perfect. A bag of doubloons. No freaking way. <laughs> As I headed home, thinking nothing weird could possibly happen here, a mysterious hooded figure approached me, unfolding a scroll and asking for a blue mackerel to get rid of their hunger. I got good news, man. They devoured it, but then they wanted a second fish that I didn't have. A tiger mackerel. <laughs> so it was home time. Okay, man, I'll, I'll get to that. Just, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit. Home once more, the ship was finally upgraded with our extra rod space with a better engine to boot. Although we're also gonna have less space to hold fish. Oh, and I also got the perfect package achievement now too for getting full cargo. Only a lot more achievements to go until 100%. Okay, so I still have these four relics to find. The ring, the necklace, watch, and music oh. box, as well as the corrupted fish for the fishmonger. But we'll get to it. I'm a busy guy. I'm on the case. I'll, I'll get it done. Don't worry. I docked in another port and talked to a grieving father for a bit, who, after I agreed to retrieve the belongings of his son who had died at sea, told us a bit about the old mayor. He was a very weird guy, apparently. 
friendly. I then talked to the trader who gave us some sweet cash in return for the doubloons and jewelry. More dredging was now in order. It literally is the name of the game, so not all that surprising. This time, it was inside of a small rock alcove where I made sure to head home for the correct time. Didn't want to repeat a last time with a massive fish. You know what? We're gonna be a little baby and go to sleep. This is not a 100 days. I'm playing till I get 100%. It seemed I had much more of the map to explore, but I just kept going back and forth between our fishing towns of Greater Marrow. I nabbed a hydraulic rod from the shipwreck, getting me another achievement, and also letting me catch oceanic fish. I was feeling pretty prepared as the ship had yet another part added. All the while, the game had a background system in which our fisherman is able to read books on his downtime, giving us effects such as less panic, for example, from reading the book Relaxed Mind. There we were, sailing along the lovely waters when, um... Uh <laughs> Yep, giant giant squid monster popped out and said hello. Moving on, our fishing ship headed to Ingfell, the next town on our radar. Again, no 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 pun intended, my bad, my bad. After a quick stop in there, I headed to another small island near it where we found a hermit looking for a family crest. He had links in Ingfell, so I accepted and headed into this awesome cove waterfall area where I got attacked by a giant shark monster again, damaging my hull even more. And to make matters worse, I couldn't make it through the rocks I tried to get to and um, snagged the second death of the video. Back at the docks where I died, I sorted out my inventory and I just decided to go home because I didn't want to go back in those rocks. Gonna have to make all the way home with only one engine because I'm an idiot. As it turns out though, a quick pit stop to Ingfell to rest was the best idea. Back home and back on the fishing grind, we gave the grieving father we met earlier her son's belt buckle, which I didn't even notice I found to be honest, and in return got a research part. Yes, I will very much take that. Thank you. What do you think happens to a person that eats the flesh? Probably they go mad. <laughs> I thought about upgrading my engine, but it turns out I can't actually see what the later upgrades are until I unlock the first ones. Interesting. I mean, I, I guess that makes sense, but I don't really know what to work towards then. Taking a quick pit stop to look at the pursuits. That is basically just like our goals or quests for now. I have to find the rest of the collector's items, of course, but also look around in Gale Cliffs for the family crest that I tried to get before. So that was the next destination. Let's maybe not die this time. I should have stayed longer last time I was there. I think I need to utilize my storage a little bit more. Wading through the more crazy mist in the ocean, I got to the cliffs and decided to take it much slower so I don't get chopped like before. But I got hit again. Not too hard though, because I survived and found a creepy crab looking altar around the side of the island. So this needs crabs of some kind. It's like the third time we found some weird ritual altar looking thing in this world. What the heck is going on out here? Okay, more shipwrecks. I'll be back here tomorrow morning. You guys hang on. <laughs> Yet again, I left way too late to get home and on our way home. Cliffs took the life of our sailor once more. Oh, man. Progress was unfortunately lost, but I can always gain it back, and this time I was sensible and headed home for the night. But on the way, as always, something caught my eye. Another, another weird little altar on the rocks. And when I went over to it, a vision flashed before my eyes once again. Lord, you're now bursting through the cliff, sending rocks tumbling into the water, and eye opens to this new world. Could this have been what was causing the havoc that the people of this world are so scared to talk about? Or is it meaning the eye that tells us when I get crazy? I, I, I don't know. I just don't know. Getting closer to the area that was marked with the family crest, I found a traveling merchant at a small dock nearby. So I traded with them, and they bought all of my slimy fish out of my inventory before telling us that a photographer, a camera enthusiast, was out to take pictures of the wild, had set up on the south island of the Marrows. Oh, maybe Maybe she's set up like on one of these islands. Okay, we'll check that island on our way home, then we'll go to that one. By the way, I'm, I'm gonna mention this now. This traveling merchant is absolutely the goat. She also gave us creepy stories about some really scary fish. It's fine. Yeah, I, I didn't need to sleep tonight. Oh, when you want me to go find them, that's great. Just, just what I wanted to hear. Tons more upgrades meant our storage locker and our wallet was cleared out, but I didn't have quite enough money to get myself a new hull. For that, I had to build back up my reserve of mainly wood and other materials. But luckily, I could do that while going through the story. A new hull meant holding more fish, and I absolutely was not about to say no to that. And out of nowhere, another achievement. Careless harvesting depleted a total of 25 fishing spots. Neat. This 100% is coming along quicker than we thought. On our way to find the photographer, I found a ship 
shipwreck that had some very weird coincidences. It's almost identical to the ship given to you by the mayor, except this was a huge breach on the side. When inspecting the cargo of the ship, I found scrap metal and not too much else. But after moving on, looking into the cabin and poking into some electrical places, a note fell out and fell directly on my head. I decided to read that when I got back home, so I headed back on my way. I definitely wanted to check out the photography island, but I was sidetracked once again by yet another vision oh. rock. This time, touching the rock gave us vision of dark rocks erupting from the earth and causing huge tremors across the world as crimson lightning flew between them. Could these rocks be giving us like the bad ending and we just have to piece it together slowly before heading to the photography island i actually decided to do a bit more fishing and dredging close to the many shipwrecks i found i damaged the ship a couple times along the way oh, what i was literally one second away from port that's bs i did say i was going to be doing a lot of that but i got some big hauls enough to make me want to try and grab that stupidly difficult family crest once again this time we actually managed to get it but uh the sea monster whacked us from below once again Goodbye, goodbye, I'm gonna leave. Okay, we got it. With a final really close call on our sanity tracking eye. The eyes, the eyes, why are there the eyes? I got away and successfully finished this quest. Oh my god, that was a little bit too close for comfort to be quite frank. Setting sail for Gale Shores was the next task ashore as this hermit needed his family crest. He gave us another task to help fix his family affairs with his brother, which I did easily. And as it turned out by doing this, I got the ability to clear debris in the cliffs. Easy. And thankfully, one of the artifacts was blocked off by some debris, so it was all worth it. The retired whaler was able to give us some explosives that we could buy at any time. A really neat new mechanic that would help us find a lot of new areas. One explosion later and... Boom, we are at the shipwreck. I'm kind of like cracked at dredging now. The rusted music box was ours. Also, I upgraded the ship and added a light in the front. Should make our occasional crashes and deaths much less often. Before handing in the artifact to the collector, I happened to read the note we found early in that creepy shipwreck. The note said this. I had absolutely no idea what that meant. He knows. That's very creepy. I'm sure later, the note will make a lot more sense. And achievement god, let's go. The secret. Surrender the music box. Two down, three to go. The collector was very happy with our second deposit, and in return his magical spells gave me the ability to insta-teleport to Blackstone Isle. Then he marked the stellar basin as the next area for our dredging adventures, but that's quite far. All of them are quite far, I suppose. I had a couple more materials to go before I got to upgrading my hull, but my money situation needed some tending to, so I spent a little bit of time grinding up our fish cache, upgrading our engine again on the way. Abyssal? Okay, well, we'll get to that at some point, I'm sure. I'm gonna catch these whales. Actually, they will probably destroy my ship. I'm gonna probably not do that on second thought. Our fishing adventures also took me to a new set of islands. Oh, yep, yeah, there's a wreck of some kind. A chest? Which gave me some good loot, as well as some new shipwrecks that... Yeah, they have giant crabs underneath them, because of course they do. Okay, what the hell is your problem, man? You know what, let's try this out. Huh. It works. And I got an achievement. Dimensional bypass. Travel a long distance using manifest. One more achievement done. During the grind, I also managed to get enough materials for the builder who, way back at the start, asked us to deliver them to their home. I, I don't want to find the footage. I just just shake my word on it. Let's go tell the builder. Hopefully she will be appreciative. I hope so. It was a lot of work valuable resources appreciative she was and very happy to be getting out of our hometown of greater marrow and starting her new life so happy in fact that she gave us some research parts as a reward our errands were going very well and the town folks seemed to like us but i had a lot of free time on my hands so i was kind of drifting towards some gut-wrenching uh, existential questions okay for real though what is wrong with this town what is wrong with this place why are people why do people live here why am I here? Uh, well, you know what they say, it's best to just ignore all your problems, right? So that's what I did. All right, I'm just gonna get some money. I need to get money and I need a dredge. This game just kind of naturally lends itself towards a decent bit of grinding. There's just so many research parts, engine upgrades, and more stuff we can use money on. It just makes my life way easier. Oh yeah, just want a quick update. At this stage of the game, I was getting pretty good about not smashing into rocks and losing half my money on repairs. After grinding a little while longer, I decided to keep on going because the piece of cloth for the hull and the refined metal will take a ton of resources. I'm also gonna need even more money because that piece of refined metal is gonna be expensive. I believe it's like five hundred dollars but whatever i'm just gonna go look around for stuff to dredge because i want that cloth but along the way i bumped into that photography island from earlier that i had very much forgot about oh little station oh it's the photographer finally 
Disaster ensued as the photographer says that her best lens was lost in Stellar Basin, coincidentally the exact same place that the next artifact is. Okay, I think we can do that. I'm gonna have to be very fast though because I imagine that we are gonna be chased by something very scary. Diving straight into the basin, I got the lens first try. There it is, photography equipment. And got the heck out of there as soon as I could. That was way easier than the family crest near the cliff, which took me like a million tries. And as a result, she gave me her camera. Absolute W for us. This new mechanic lets us take some photos of the world's natural marine life, and then take them back to the photographer for some extra dialogue. Not necessary for the game in any sense, but still super neat. I wasn't sure if this could help us in getting the third artifact, but I was definitely gonna do my best to use it for that purpose. Not long after, I docked up on the makeshift jetty, which had weird symbols and footprints etched into the beach, and was hiding a shiny secret below. Okay, a sapphire ring, very nice. None of this though was as important as our most pressing short-term goal. All right, purchase upgrade, achievement. How much more space do we get? Oh my God, actually a lot. Am I crazy? No, no, I'm crazy, right? That's a lot. Oh my God, I can get even more? <gasps> I pretty much all this. Oh my God, please. I, well, I just want more space. I want nothing but space. The new hull was installed and this would help me so much on literally every single one of our goals, especially 100% completion though. All of the grinding was useful in another way as we were picking up a lot of new fish for the encyclopedia, which would end up being one of the harder achievements to chase down for 100%. Okay. What was the next goal? Two things came to my mind mainly. The third artifact and the two quests that have been sitting in my notice board for so long. I need to go find Tiger Mackerel and Conger Eel. One involved me returning to Gale Cliffs at night, which I was not really looking forward to, but we headed out and grabbed one of those slippery creatures. These look eel-like. Yes. Okay, that's exactly what I need. Nabbing the eel with ease, we stop off at a small island to rest as I let the eel rot for the quest, which looks as disgusting as it sounds. I also checked inside an old laboratory, just one of the number of weird buildings we've seen so far, and inside was another rush note that said, not safe, expect retaliation immediately, evacuating to fort. Just another mystery to solve, but clearly something happened here. Something pretty bad. I decided to get the tiger mackerel another time because the main area, Stellar Basin, and its treasure was just laying in wait, and I simply could not resist it. All right, now we're going back to Stellar Basin. Dolphin. I was gonna try to catch one, but then I realized one, that's freaking evil too. They probably just like damage my ship. There was also a ton of cool night fish and structures near the basin, which I wanted to take my time to work through before we came back to get the artifact. My plan throughout this whole thing is to not really rush the story, because this just leaving a ton of grinding at the end. As we're working our way through the mysteries, we're just gonna collect as many of the upgrades and fish as we can. This makes more sense to me. It's just more enjoyable. I'm enjoying this game a lot. This game is really fun. But of course, gathering these fish is never as easy as it seems. Oh my god. Hey, guy. This time around, it was not a fish. I honestly probably would have preferred that, but a gigantic squid that was attacking us from below. Okay, maybe, maybe. Shockingly enough, my ship actually managed to tank a couple of stabs, but it was not enough. Balloon, I know, oh, okay. And the squid was responsible for my next untimely death. Man, what is that, like three times now? That is just far too many for a player of my caliber of skill. There's also yet another dock in the new area, this one called the Starlight Pontoon, and it provided us with the classic storage, shipyard, and access to the traveling merchant. <gasps> the traveling merchant! No way! It's all within close distance to our next artifact. This is why she's my goat, guys. I mentioned it earlier. It was here that the next hull upgrade caught my eye. Nine? Oh my god, I want that so bad. And I simply just could not resist making this my new priority, even though we had literally just upgraded our hull very recently. Well, we, we need two scrap pieces of scrap metal before we can even start working towards it. We also need crazy amounts of money. I also meandered my way around a little bit more and found the researcher who introduced herself on one of the islands. Oh, research? Okay. And like everyone around here, she could use my help. What a surprise. She told us that initially she was part of the research outpost on the other island that I had found before, but that was before it was attacked and she lost a ton of different specimens of fish and God knows what else. Probably a couple of her friends' lives, to be honest. What was interesting this time, though, is that we had to use a bunch of different strategies to get all the fish. Almost like a tutorial mini game of the different mechanics. Firefly squid is easy, but I have not seen an Aurora jellyfish. I don't know if I can catch those. The difficulty of this game was for sure ramping up now, but so were the rewards. The game was instantly made 100 times better by the introduction of the first dog in the world so far. 
Hey, there's a doggy. I just had to bring him on board as a stray. Yeah, you can follow me. I, I couldn't take care of him though, unfortunately, as the seven seas ain't a place for a pooch. So we have to find him a new home. But he can hang with us for a little bit. You know, he's not hurting nobody. Because I'm just so good at this game. Assembled in a unique manner. All of the stellar base and errands I wanted to go do before the third artifact were falling into place so nicely. I grinded out my next hole, gave the dog to the researcher, and I was so close to getting the last of her specimens too. As I said before, this was shaping up to be a lot easier than the quest for the last artifact. The Aurora Jellyfish was the last of the researcher specimens we nabbed, and this unlocked a new mechanic that would be key to nabbing the third artifact. As a reward, she said she could give us this device that would allow sample retrieving from what was known as the Abyssal Zone, that massive area near the giant squid. But first, I had to retrieve a couple of prototype parts. Okay, I remember those prototype parts. I should have just grabbed them earlier. Oh yeah, the hole I mentioned earlier, it was gonna be a game changer. Nine new cargo spaces? Like, are you kidding? How could I possibly turn that down? And it gave me my next achievement too. Hole Refined, what a cool name. There was one more hull upgrade I could get to next, the fourth tier, but that was still a little while away. The hard work had paid off and our boat was looking so stacked right now. I absolutely could not get complacent now though. So many horrors were still lurking below us. Holy smokes, it's a whole ass shark. Oh my goodness, long time no see. We popped into Greater Mara for the first time in what felt like actual weeks for a quick pit stop, and it was good to see all the pals again, including the cheery fishmonger and the shipwright. Yeah, just, just, just joking, these people can smile if a clown looked them dead in the eye. To be fair, I probably wouldn't smile if that happened to me either. But it was short-lived as I was off again, just as quickly as I arrived. Oh, and on a side note, selling the jewelry and precious items from this game is crazy. I'd been building up so many from just dredging all over the place. I got $1,000 from selling all of the ones I collected in the last 44 days in game. Passive income, baby. Just as you're sitting here passively watching this video. I know we're not that far in, but if you are enjoying, please just drop a subscription, okay? I'm gonna be making a lot more of these videos, and I also stream a lot of my playthroughs live. So if you wanna watch, and maybe give me some tips and tricks. You could maybe even make it in a video. No pressure though, it's your call. Don't worry about it. Back to the video. Finally, I retrieved the prototype part from the laboratory. Remember, these were needed for the researcher device that would let us fish at those greater depths. And when I handed them in, she gave us a sampling device. Not just that though, she'd also developed a repulsion machine, a tool so great that we could make a huge noise that would scare the giant squid away. Hopefully. It could also apparently make him want to eat me. I'm not sure. What the hell is your problem, lady? Mm. Eh, we take those odds. 50-50 isn't too bad. Thankfully enough, the repulsion artifact steered away the squid, and the machine worked. The third artifact, the ring, was in our possession. It was a little bit scary, I can't lie, though. And oh boy, this trip back to the collector was just as trippy as the last two. All right, how's it going, buddy? I'm back. Got you another ring. This time, he gave me the banish ability in exchange for the rings, allowing us to fire off blazing lights to dispel enemies and protect us at the same time. And, as is the aim of the video, we got a story achievement. The Bond entrusted the ring. It was becoming very clear that the collector was going to get his hands on all five relics. But what he would do with them after we were finished getting them all? I had literally no clue at this point. And somehow, this was all related back to the mysterious visions from all those black stones we touched earlier, and the disappearance surrounding the old mare and the fisherman before us. This is just getting super weird, dude, but whatever, we'll just take it in stride, it's all good. After this, more grinding was in order. I needed to get that extra hull, okay? It's not a want, it is a need. This time, it was in Greater Marrow, so I had to avoid the creepy old lighthouse lady once again. Oh, she's not happy about that. What's this chick's problem, man? Why she hate me? She is one weird lady. And it may seem like we're closing on completion with over half the artifacts collected, which is the bulk of the game's main story, but we still had a lot of work to do in this game, especially if we wanted to get 100% anytime soon. Not to mention the literal million mysteries left unsolved. But we were getting new fish every 10 minutes anyways, so good progress made now at least. Okay, I really want this fishing rod. So what I'm gonna do is go see if the traveling merchant is selling any research parts, because then I can feel comfortable Go checking out all the new areas. I just want to up you guys on my dredging skills. I am extremely cracked at this point, and my confidence was growing in the game. Honestly, a little bit too much, as I just kept going out at night. God damn, I've never seen it this foggy. Also snagged myself the versatile rod upgrade, as this was key for our progression. Which I believe, if I'm understanding correctly, will let me catch, like, everything I possibly need. But I unfortunately had to take off a couple of our upgrades. Blow this up. And man, being able to blast through these blocked pathways with dynamite is super useful too. It really gives us a clear direction on where to go. I'm gonna jump another refined metal, and then we are gonna head straight for Devil's Spine. Devil's Spine, the home of our next artifact, the Pocket Watch. We're kind of at the edge of the map now, which is where the scariest fish hang out. 
Upon entering this awesome looking area, I docked and was immediately jumped by a very interesting looking dude who was convinced that I was a biblical arrival and asked me what my spear was seeking. My spirit seeks happiness and what my flesh craved. Chill of the water. And then what the world deserves next. Deserve. Deserve. <laughs> I'm a positive guy. Extremely bold words from this man as he told us it was now my turn to act as a herald of the purge and collect the fathomless flames to light the nearby fires. No doubt this would be crucial to finding the next artifact somehow, so I, I just played along. Like, just don't mess with the crazy guys. Seems like a trustworthy guy. Seems like not, not, not insane at all. Definitely not. Did I mention that there are literally active volcanic craters underneath the water too? because there are. Lots of volcanoes, and I imagine lots of new fish. At this point, I was slowly realizing that there wasn't a single area of this world that isn't Omega Cursed or trying to kill me. So with that newfound realization, I did a quick pit stop at the Cherry Pontoon Dock to upgrade the engine, getting our next achievement ticked off and in the bag. Achievement, no time to linger if you were curious. We're getting a combined engine speed of 75 kilometers per hour, and another achievement very quickly after, unwanted for discarding 25 fish. Very neat. I was getting through these achievements very nicely. That is, spite all the horrors beat me in Devil's Spine so far. Freaking screaming fish and another giant squid. But this time it is fire hands. Why are they just random ass fire type Pokemon living in water? I'm so confused. Okay. Quick progress check. At this point, I had three out of five artifacts and 16 of the 40 achievements. So a little bit below halfway through the game. I also almost fully upgraded the ship's hull, only needing a couple of pieces of wood and a bit of scrap metal. Find metal, easy and done. Now we just need four pieces of wood, a piece of scrap metal. And in the blink of an eye, the metal somehow fell into my hands, and now so did the hole. Huh? The goat. The goats were the just greatest of all time. Boom. And that's an achievement as well. Wow, that's a lot of space. Holy smokes. While exploring and dredging across this fiery landscape, I came across the ancient ruins, which was home to do very interesting situations. I checked out the ancient lighthouse first, revealing a square slot for an item to unlock the door. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure I'll find it later. And a mysterious cave, giving me the option to check the left or right walls. The left wall depicted the birth of some sort of civilization and a beacon of light repelling a tentacled figure. And the right wall was, well, what I imagined to be the fall of civilization with an eruption tearing through a tall lighthouse. Oh. Everything is being destroyed. Okay, interesting. These seemed really similar to two things I knew. The beacon that kept the squid away, and the giant lighthouse I'd went to moments before, which was already surrounded by this volcanic lava water. Didn't matter anyway, because I got something better. Another achievement. It's too easy, baby. Light up the night. Have a combined light strength of 3,000 lumens. That name could definitely be a Minecraft song. Now let's just check out what's going on here. Maybe this will be easier than that other place. I'm too tired to figure out what the hell's going on over there. And by here, I mean this weird, creepy jungle with half-life looking monsters. They look kind of important and relatively story-related, not gonna lie. And honestly, I am not sure if it will be. I took it very slowly to begin with, but got more confident as the ship got further involved. I did not really expect this. This was like a swampy maze with roots that would jump up and block the ship's path if it went down the wrong way. No idea what's going on. And I definitely wouldn't have expected to find a plane crash in the middle of the jungle airplane what is this after that i'm not gonna lie to you extremely stressful navigation i took a breather to upgrade some equipment and thought about how this would get dealt with okay i do not know what's going on because i don't know if you guys have noticed but the vines have been shifting like crazy and it seems to be honestly rather grand and the answer seemed to present itself very conveniently in the form of an old man who was stuck out here on this mangrove swamp. He basically told me a story how his squadron was killed and he has to be the one to avenge them all. So I went off to get the lost pieces of the mortar they once had. Nice, nice. And used that to bombard the next creature that killed his friends. And then hopefully get us to where we need to be for the next artifact too. This might actually be a relatively straightforward quest. It seems like a noble one as well help with that dude get revenge. I brought in the materials, then got to work yeah. setting up the traps for these mine suckers so we could blow them to kingdom come. Oh. Looks like we might have got them. Oh my god. You got rolled, okay. Rolled. That's the third one down. Let's go see what he thinks. The old man was very happy, and honestly, so was I. It's always nice doing a good deed. With the carcasses of these sea creatures in front of him, the old man plunged a knife onto one of them and brought out our necklace, the fourth relic. Don't mind if I do. So we helped an old guy avenge his friend and progress the story in just one day. We're goaded. 
Okay. Okay. This guy's kind of the goat, maybe. With that, I warped back the collector, and this time, his reward was even better than all the others. Entropy, allowing us to instantly harvest an entire shoal of fish. I also got an achievement from it called The Chains, but we were about to wish we had chains because the next location was Devil's Spine. Yeah, that volcanic hellscape I grinded through earlier was where I needed to get the last artifact. Oh boy. Are you human? Oh, he doesn't like that. Why, of course, it's as human as you are. Okay, that was a weird interaction. Chugging back into the salty air of the night, I tested out the new atrophy ability, which actually gave us a 100% chance of obtaining an aberration. That is the name for those weirdo corrupted fish, basically. So if I ever wanted to poison everyone with a feast of corrupted fish, I knew how to get him much quicker now. Speaking of quicker, I was making some serious progress with the fat stacks of cash accumulated in my wallet after visiting the trader, and I just randomly got the cash for gold achievement because my total trinket sales came to $1,500. Another achievement. Very nice to check off. Good progress we're getting made in our fish upgrade and the encyclopedia too. Over halfway to 100%. We can definitely do this. I literally can't fit everything I want. Then, out of nowhere, a huge story beat dropped. I was simply sailing around some rocky islands when I came across an old rowboat with some guy hunched over. He looked up at me and it was revealed that he was the old mayor. Through what seemed like a lifetime of insanity, he told us that him, no clue what him is, and this mysterious man's wife dredged up an old book and that something followed the book out of the water. This creature then spoke, telling the old mayor that it was coming for the breath of the people because they wouldn't need it anymore, and then plunged the world into darkness and when they awoke they were washed up on the shore with the mystery man clutching the still book that seemingly led to so much despair? Crying for the man to throw the book back, the old man realized that the book had been stained with the blood of the man's wife? He left us with one final parting word, to find the lighthouse keeper. Yep, apparently that crazy old woman that keeps giving us creepy looks has knowledge far beyond what we could have once imagined. It's always the crazy ones, man. Oh, looks like that lighthouse keeper, uh, the, I'm gonna have to pay her a visit, see what's going on. I remember there, someone, I, I don't remember who exactly, was talking about what happened to the old mayor, so I guess we'll find out soon. Seems like pretty sane, dude. I'm him. Right back to this cursed place. But yep, it was now time for me to explore the Devil's Spine once more. Let's just open none of these volcanoes explode while I'm here. There was a big collection of fossils and outlines in the rocks around here, and it looked like I had to find each one and place them in separately. I feel like this is definitely going to be the hardest one to do. But it was the last artifact I had to get, and I couldn't let the collector down. After a bit of research, it turned out that most of our work is able to be done by just dropping a couple of crab pods around the broken buildings. Pretty easy way to get it done. It was a nice change of pace. Man, this place is annoying. These little orange fish circle me and act as a beacon so that the big guy can come and chomp at me for dinner. Everywhere I went, I kept upgrading, fishing, getting the new entrance to the encyclopedia. It would be so worth it for that final badge. Let's rewind a little bit. Remember back to when I first came to Devil's Spine? and I was greeted by a very interesting character who told me that it was my destiny to act as the Herald of the Purge and that I should try to collect fathomless flames to light nearby fires in the area. Well, unlocking these fossil rock outlines in the wall was the key to me finding those fathomless flames. So my goal for this area moving forward was crystal clear. I just have to watch out for those sharp teeth on the fish underneath us. Man, would they not give up and those noises they made were as annoying as ever. After gathering some of the flames, slowly handing them back into the man and then back Back and away from him as fast as I possibly could. I don't want to be near that guy. I found out that he had the fifth artifact I needed. The pocket watch. But, of course, he wouldn't give it up without me giving him something in return. Okay, of course I have to do it. God damn it. These people always always trying to get one over on me. But I went ahead with it because, of course, I did. At this point, did I really have a choice? How many hours in am I? The flames are lit. The chill of the deep touches us now. It is time. Come. Following the strange man up the cliff, he began to tell me that the pocket watch will mark the start of our journey as well as the end, then began chanting in a mysterious rhythm. Huge swirling winds and flames engulfed him until he was nothing but dust, swept into the sea, leaving only the watch behind. Good thing that's all we needed! Okay, we got the watch. Won't ask too many questions then. And off I went. Rip, weird old man. I couldn't wait, so I headed straight back to the collector to give him the last artifact, as almost everything so far had led up to this point. I stepped up to the collector, handed him the watch, and the achievement was as prompt as ever. The moment. Collect the pocket watch. I d of course I had the determination. Now, with these five relics in our possession, only one thing rem Oh yeah, because the handkerchief. I forgot about that. I did not, in fact, know by now, but he still wouldn't tell me, so I just have to go along with whatever finale he had in store. A warning box popped up saying I'd entered the final stages of Dredge. Let's do it. 
Don't know what's gonna happen, it's not gonna save, so let's just go. Talking to the collector, he ended up telling me that destination is the open expanse to the west of Greater Marrow. It's marked on the map. We must not tear in the open waters without such significant cargo. Make haste! All aboard as the collector jumped on and the two of us sailed to the spot marked on the map, ready for whatever horrors were awaiting us. I really hope this guy's a good guy. It would kind of suck if he wasn't, and was like scamming me the whole time. The collector told us we were in the right spots. This is where she was taken from us and we can at last bring her back. And he began to read his magical book and throw in the artifacts overboard. Pocket watch gone, necklace gone, ring gone, and key into the music box. Which is cool for him, but also sick for us. Oh, achievement, find a use for the relics. Okay, well, kind of spent a while looking for those, but it's fine. I didn't want them anyway. Oh, something's floating up. Something or... Nope, more so someone. Uh... <laughs> Oh, okay. Cool. Yep, no, that's fine. Wow. <laughs> it literally does not stop. That's it. And that was it. The credits rolled as we saw our town of Greater Marrow burning the background. No explanation. Nothing. Okay. Don't know if I like that ending. But that was sure as hell not the end for me. We got a lot more achievements, stick around. So the save reloaded to before we left on the trip with the collector and it was now time for me to really focus on getting 100%. Interesting. Well, I still got a lot of achievements too. And I imagine there's probably different endings so I gotta figure out how to get that. I don't know if I like that ending because all of my friends burned to the ground. The traitor probably lived though, so. The goat is still alive, but not a fan of that. First on the 100% checklist, before I tried to get anything else done, I wanted to try to get the good ending, which began with me talking to the lighthouse keeper about what the old mayor had told us before he, uh, vanished. You have to move on for your sake as well. Take control, be rid of that thing once and for all. I don't freaking wanna, man. <laughs> After speaking to her, I accepted she wasn't really much help, so I headed off to find that old mayor once more. In his place at the dock was a very strange note. So I went to the next best person, the collector once more. But this time, I did not agree to go on his voyage, and instead pressed for information about the book. The Book of the Deep. This all seemed oddly familiar. The stories the mayor told of a man and a woman, of the man finding a book and the woman being taken by the sea. Then, our first ending, where we see the collector desperate to bring back a woman. I tried to grab the book and we ended up getting in a fist fight, but when I swung at him, my fist collided with and shattered a mirror? To throw an even bigger bombshell than that, the collector begs us to use the relics to save the woman like in the first ending, and bone chillingly tells us to undo everything, undo what you did. I did nothing, bro. What's your problem? With the Book of the Deep now in our hands, the lighthouse keeper told me that I had the book the whole time and to make the most of the window of lucidity. And then a creeping little thought hit me. Wait, am I the collector? It's a mirror. Yes, I know I'm slow. Don't flame me in the comments. You remember where it happened in the gloomy darkness behind the bay? When you're ready, I'll point you the way. I'm ready. Wait till the light is thickest. Following this creepy woman who's been on our nerves the whole time, I've maybe been a little bit too harsh, I can't lie. She told me to throw the book back? I was trying to throw the book back, but when I did... The book struggles in its in your grasp, its weight's almost shifting from side to side, so it's fall pathetically against your feet. Throw it back! Oh, the book is not a fan of that. But I'm throwing it anyway. Oh, another achievement! Throw it back. I think this is hopefully going to end better than the music box. Oh, maybe not, because the light went out again. If something massive rises out of the water, it might be over. Maybe? Well, that was better than the town being burned down. Is if the town's burning down, I'm gonna be pissed off. Let's go! We're so back, baby. Good ending. Let's go. Anywho, back to the achievements. I had to catch myself 100 crabs, which meant crab pots everywhere. With these all dropped off, I could also begin focusing on researching and money making while the crab pots did their work. 26 achievements done. 14 to go to make it 40 out of 40. Looking at what still had to be done for 100%, there were so many tasks. Completing all the side quests, all the research, upgrade every piece of equipment, as well as really niche difficult ones like catching 150 fish in trawl nets or catching every single species of fish. All right, we got a crab pot and we got a trawl. 
So we need money. It was back to the grind for money so I could focus on these first couple of achievements while also keeping the others in mind too. My rough plan was to basically try to complete multiple at once. This would speed me up so much. But one thing stood out is something I needed more than anything. We have a lot of fishing to do. So much fishing to do. Pretty much everything we need to do requires money. Oh, and once again, I came across the Tiger Macro guy who I've accidentally ignored for like almost the entire game. I'm gonna catch a Tiger Macro for you very soon. Actually, the next thing I do, I'm gonna do it for you, okay, man? To get all the side quests done, he's gonna have to get checked off. Finally caught that damn fish for him. Tiger Macro. Okay, I'm gonna go give that dude the Tiger Macro right now. I'm sorry it's taking so long, man. But now he wanted a Snake Macro. Gave it to him and got a book in return, and he was done with. Finally. Bro definitely does not know. There was a lot of exploring that needed to be done across the obscure islands on the map. Yeah, I also have an achievement to check every port in the game, so I gotta go and find all these, like, obscure islands, kinda. And there was also a good deal of areas that I had cleared so quickly that I didn't have much time to explore, such as the Twisted Strand, the mangrove jungle we visited earlier to help that soldier dude. A quick trip back down to the vine-infested tree maze, and I got my latest achievement, Researcher. Every pot researched. Perfect. So pots were ticked off, and I was also pretty close to completing nets and engines as well. As I was sailing around, I snagged some of the dog tags that our friend in this area was looking for earlier. These dog tags were basically a little collectible I could give to the airman. You know, the guy who I helped blow the hell out of those monsters earlier. Oh yeah, and I don't think I mentioned this, but this dude can also actually make me bait, which was super helpful for catching all the fish later in the game. Like the grinning gar, which meant there was just one single fish left in this area to grab. But unfortunately, the encyclopedia didn't tell me what it was. So it was back out into the depths to get as many fish as we could until, hey, we blew up through this area and found it. In here should be a scary fish. Hey, man. Oh my god, and the trophy one. That's insane. All right, I think with that fish, that's every single mangrove caught. Yeah, 10 out of 10. All right, I guess we got to decide where to go next. I would decide where to go next after a quick pit stop back at Greater Mara, where I picked up the next achievement. Okay, there we go. Catch 100 crabs in crab pots. Achievement got trapped by these walls. And it turns out crabs actually make crazy money. I also had about 25 out of 30 fish caught in the shallow areas, which wasn't too bad. We're getting there. We're chipping away at it. And right after we docked to the dusty pontoon and maxed out our net research. And you know what that means? Achievement time. Researcher colon nets. We're going to be needing this eventually because there's a whole lot of stuff that we have to be trawling. Next up was engines, which we did right after as I was still buzzing from the excitement of getting nets done. And that meant with rods and engines done, we were officially completed all of our research and locked in two more achievements towards 100%. At this point in the game, story completing everything, I was an old hat at fishing, hardly making any mistakes, and I hadn't died in so long. I was hooking up trophy fish left, right, and center. And to boot, our side quest board was looking well. We still have to find some stone tablets, collect all the samples for the researcher, and hand in some rare fish. There was way more ticks than open quests. After this train of thought, I decided to head back and try my luck at gathering some of the rare species hanging around the giant squid. I chose to activate the generator machine that would keep the gigantic squid at bay, and in turn we got the ruptured vessel and the calcified snailfish pretty quickly. The few others coming in shortly after, like the grazing shark and void eye. This time, no attacks from below. Shout out science for real. Oh, and I'd finally found a new dock too, the makeshift dock. It looked super pretty, and it was our singular dock we'd missed the whole game. So that achievement safe haven was ours. Thank goodness that didn't take too long. That could have been very annoying. We're going crazy all over the place now, but that's exactly what we want to get these achievements. I was also almost to $8,000 as well, which was kind of crazy since this was the most money I'd had at any point ever in the game. Next two side quests we could tick off, getting the rare fish to the merchant at Dusty Pontoon, which was pretty easy. God damn it, I should have turned those in early. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you can't be for real. I wasted so much time buying them when I should have just... It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. On to the next pursuit. <laughs> but getting the researcher sampling was a little bit more difficult. All right, with that anglerfish acquired, let's head over and talk to the researcher, see if she's interested in my findings. And interested she was, as she began talking about cellular mutations which occurred in the areas and giving us a warning for the future. But more importantly, we left with a singular task left on our sideboard unchecked, although we might be missing a couple to pick up, as I foreshadowed earlier. So I decided to head back to Stellar Basin to grab a lot more of the obscure fish. Let's take a quick look at our encyclopedia at this stage. 122 out of 138. At this point of the 100% run, I have to be really finicky about which ones I'm searching for and where I'm getting them. I actually have to focus up and kind of laser in on what I needed to to get done. And one fish that is renowned for being one of the most annoying and time-consuming fish in the entire game, the Parhelion Jellyfish. It's one of the few fishes that is only caught through trawling, only at night and only in the Stellar Basin location. Yay! 
Hey, we got it. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That was only like a day or two of uh, circling. Now we just need to find that goddamn freaking other fish for the quest that I'm currently forgetting the name of. Thank God we got it quickly. That could have taken so much longer. Oh, wait, I need this. <gasps> Let's go. Perfect. I also have to keep in mind that I needed to catch the rest of the aberrations. I couldn't just catch the normal version of the fish. I needed the, the spooky version as well. In addition to snagging those stone tablets for our side quest. Speaking of the aberrations, the devil's spine was my next goal for two purposes. Firstly, to grab those stone tablets I just mentioned. And secondly, baiting the big fish into following me and getting its little minions to attack me. Only for me to just use the banish ability. Getting another achievement while doing it too. Banisher for banishing 10 threats. With the last stone tablet in hand, we left the rocky area, we found it in and what you're kidding you can't possibly be for real okay well yep we got murked bye shark dude reset the game and it was as if it never happened i handed in the tablets to my best buddy the trader and he formed them into one large tablet that read a mysterious poem when the sky mistakes the stars and the air grows thick with night the deep will open its scars. Protect us, O oh guiding light. He says that he knew only of one guiding light, the lighthouse near our town. But these tablets are far older than that. Another mystery for us to solve on my journey to 100%. The lighthouse keeper was no help whatsoever. So we tried the only other lighthouse in the game. Ancient lighthouse? Oh, that makes sense. And as I thought, the tablet fit into the door at the top of the lighthouse. You step through the door of the ancient lighthouse. The stairway to the top has collapsed. This is as far as you're going to get. But it was worth it though, as we found a treasure trove of amazing items. A ridiculously bright light for our ship. 3,500 lumens? As well as precious gold rings and cups. And it took me this long in the game to realize a pretty crucial mechanic of fishing. Bro, what is happening? Three trophies in a row? Excuse me? Okay, apparently... Bait makes trophies more likely to spawn. I guess? I, 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 I didn't know that was a thing. Moving on, there were still six achievements left, including two of the most difficult. Get all the fish. In addition to getting all the side quests. We made some progress with the second one after getting finished up at the new lighthouse. Announcing my arrival to the dude. <laughs> Alright. Golden Fang Tooth. And Blue Crab. Very cool book. Okay, that's every quest I currently have complete. It's gotta go find a couple of new ones. Digging our ship to all corners of the map many times now and getting new species of fish along the way, I found more side quests, and by that, I mean I find more creepy hooded dudes who wanted fish. Yeah, I think there's another dude over here who wants fish. I think so. Yeah, there he is. Hey, fella. How are you, my friend? Another dude. And in true video game fashion, that's not every fish ship. There was one side quest left to take that I just couldn't find for the life of me. As I was sailing around trying to find the last quest, it came out of nowhere, as things often do. What's up, buddy? I came across this tiny fishing boat with Check a package addressed okay. to the dock worker, awesome. Greater Mero, one of my favorite workers. I deliver it to him. It's the dock worker. How's it going, man? And the quest was done. All right. Just two of these left. Then we need to catch every fish, catch every aberration, and then two hidden achievements. Got a really easy achievement too, just by sailing around. Prey spotted. Spot a fish of every category through your spyglass. Oh, that was all I needed. Okay. Nice. Okie dokie. Now I want to focus on the side quest achievement. We had two left, but both of them want a different series of really niche fish. So I have to travel all across the map to find about five different random types of fish. Great. I got the tarpon, ready to give to the purple guy and finish the quest, but he now wanted a horseshoe crab. Obtainable though. Yep, you guessed it, through crab pots. God damn it, of course it's in the twisted strand, the one place that I haven't put down any crab pots. Look at this, crab pots, crab pots, crab pots, crab pots. <laughs> Oh, that do be how it goes, though. So I had to go all the way back to the Crystal Strand, drop some crab pots, and wait for the horseshoe crab while I did some other things. Man, the things you need to do to just get one achievement. While the crab pot was doing its thing, I focused on delivering the cuspiel to the other guy in the red hood, and then getting him a sailfish. Sailfish. That's easy. Hopefully. Then lastly, all he needed was a frilled shark. After all that, our horseshoe crab was ready. Horseshoe crab acquired. And giant mud crab. Nice! Okay, that's two more species. That's actually huge. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. I gave Mr. Purple Hood the horseshoe crab, and he still wanted more. A bear alive. Okay, this is getting out of hand. These guys just need so many fish, man. The last two we needed were a frilled shark for the guy in red, and a bear alive for the guy in purple. One bit of good news, though, as we were randomly fishing for these guys' quests, we actually ended up getting one of the last species we needed, and completing one of the hardest achievements in the game, Master Angler.
Catch every known species of fish. Nice. I didn't think I'd get that for a long time, but that's not catching literally every fish because we still have to catch the spooky aberration versions. But working on the aberrations was actually going pretty well because while I was just randomly sailing around, I picked up a few more. Okay, apparently this one is also super hard to find. So nice. <laughs> oh, and what? And we got one of those too. Okay, we're, we're making progress. We're closing in. We're closing in. Barrel eye delivered. Consume this guy. How about we consume this? And he gave us a book that let our ship go faster in return. Kind of wish I had done the quest for these guys earlier. It's going to make me go faster. No way. Okay. Based. Very based. I'm reading. Frilled shark caught. Delivered the fish to their respective people. And finally. Nice. Complete all the side quests one way or another. Every side quest in the game was done. And the achievement providence was ours. So off I went again, crashing into some rocks at night. You'd think by playing this whole game to almost 100%, I would learn not to do that at this point, but I'm stubborn. And we headed to our next destination. You remember all those weird rock altars we found along our journey that needed fish and crabs and stuff? Well, we've been slowly competing them without realizing that we needed them all for an achievement. Crab. 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 Solve all the fish rhyme puzzles. We doing it. Only one more left for us to do. Catch all the aberrations. Because the last achievement is unlocked by getting all the other ones. Okay. Here are the fish that we haven't caught. The sturgeon. Losing my train of thought after that first item in the list. I got the sturgeon. I was right next to where we were at the time. Luckily enough. <gasps> sturgeon. I found them. I'm just blind. Okay. We're good. We were so unbelievably close to 100% goal now. Just a couple of fish to go. Okay, yeah, this is the fish we need, the ocean sunfish, but I just need a whole lot more bait, so... It was back over to the Twisted Strand, even though I'd already caught all the aberrations there, just to visit our friend the airman, get some bait from him, and then while I was sailing back to get a different fish, I used my atrophy ability and fished up the skeletal moonfish. Skeletal moonfish, didn't even know I needed that one, but cool. As well as the charred sunfish, which was my actual goal. <laughs> two and one, baby. We're closing in, guys. We're actually so freaking close. We're two off. So I instantly rushed off to the next one. Okay, where do we need to go? Twisted Strand, Tarpon, I'm on the case. Accidentally failed it once. No. No! It, oh my. Well, we picked ourselves up, tried again, and it didn't show up. Okay, I feel like I only catch them in the day. But I didn't panic, I got myself some more bait, rested until the morning, and as they say, third time's the charm. Oh my gosh, okay, we got it. Jesus, dude. I could not get that to save my life. <laughs> One more to go, the aberration of the rat tail. One more trip to get bait. I said goodbye to the airman for the final time, and we did it. Boom. 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 That's a screenshot right there. Boom. It's too easy, baby. It's too easy. We did it. 100%. 6% of people have it. That's actually pretty high. <laughs> nice. If you vibed with this video, click this one on screen right now to watch a video on me committing various crimes. I'm not asking, I'm telling. Go watch it right now.